Now, a lesson in communication from an unlikely but very familiar source. It's the latest addition to the NewsHour bookshelf. Jeffrey Brown has that. One enormous turn in the life of Alan Alda, his 11-year run in the 1970s and 80s as star of MASH, one of the most beloved programs in television history. Hello, and welcome to Scientific American Frontiers. Another, by his own account, came in 1993, when he began to host the PBS series Scientific American Frontiers. He was a non-scientist learning on the go, using his trademark humor and wit to get the experts to explain complicated ideas in accessible language. What keeps the water from going in here? I mean, it's Well, it's actually tapered. If you look at the hatch, it's like the portholes. Oh, the pressure pushes them down. What I brought to it was curiosity and a huge fund of ignorance. <laughs> And I just was after them until they could help me fill up the ignorance a little bit with real stuff. But that process of connecting with them, mm. getting them to be who they were, because they worried about getting me to understand it. So it was much more personal. And that's when I realized that you could build on that. You could help people do that all the time. Okay, now he's leaving. First, he worked to help scientists and science writers do it all the time, helping to found the Center for Communicating Science at Stony Brook University in New York. Now comes a book for the rest of us, with the colorful title, If I Understood You, Would I Have This Look on My Face? Alan Alda and I met recently at Listener Auditorium in Washington before he gave a talk about the problem and promise of communicating. What I think I've found is that it's all based on a personal connection, that if I can sort of understand in some way, make some approximation of what you're thinking and feeling, it's easier for me to get inside your head with my message. If I don't know how you're receiving it, if I can't see how it's landing on you, then I'm I'm just spraying it at you. I'm just trying to pour it into your head, but I'm, I'm not really connecting with you. Well, that connection, this is what I don't understand. That connection with another person feels so good. Why do we retreat from it? I don't understand that. We're living in a time where there's not only uh, skepticism, but even outright hostility from a lot of people towards science. That, that's, is that just a communication problem? I think it's largely a communication problem because there has to be trust, and you get trust through, one way you get trust is through good communication. There are lives at stake. Take doctors. Yeah. When, when patients regard their doctors as being empathic, at least one study has shown that the patients are 19% more likely to follow the doctor's advice. Now, in that 19%, I imagine some lives are at stake. Yeah, so some of this is life and death, communication. Yeah. 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 Science needs to be understood by the public so they can support science. I don't tell the people I, I, I care about the most, the most important thing that I can tell them, that I, that I do care. For Alda, better communicating starts with better person-to-person -person relating, a concept he had to learn as a young actor. I knew you were supposed to relate in the beginning, yeah. and I would do the best I could to relate. I thought it meant leaning into the other person's face. Yeah. So I was sort of stooped over most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but little by little, I realized you could relate to somebody on the stage, even if their back is turned to you. You pick up whatever clues you can. When you don't have clues to pick up, you can estimate what they're probably thinking by virtue of what's just been said, what you've said, or what you've just written them. You can picture what the reader is thinking with each sentence you put down. It, it, it really affects all forms of communication. In several chapters in the book, you describe these training sessions that you have for scientists and many others. And, but, and you talk about improv classes, right? Yeah. Improv we think of as comedy. I know. Most, most improvisation that people are aware of is comedy improvisation, but that's not what we teach. We teach them a much purer form of improvisation in the form of exercises. And they're, they're all designed one on top of another, uh, starting with a very basic kind of exercise that enables you to do the next one, and then that enables you to do the next one. And they all put you in touch with the other person. You have to observe the other person really carefully to improvise. I have to know 
I have to know from your body language and your face what you're doing or what you're thinking. I'm reading your face right now. Yeah. It's really fun. Let's make it. It's, What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, I mean, I, I hear you following me, and then I, and then I hear you thinking, I wonder what I'll ask next. <laughs> really, you can see that yeah, happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mostly when you look down at the paper. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's a dead giveaway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But mm. I'm, I'm picking it up. You know, it's so funny. Once in a while, I'll be talking to somebody, and I'll, I'll think I'm connected to them, and I'll say, "Wait a second. In my head, I yeah. say this. Yeah. What color is his eyes? What color are his eyes? Yeah. What?" What's the shape of his nose? What, and then you realize what you're not really paying I attention. Have a, I've, I, I realize if I think back, there's been a sort of a blob where your face <laughs> should be. I hope I haven't dissolved a blob. No, you, you're not blobby okay, at all. No, thank you. no. That's good to know, and also good to see in his work with scientists and writers an attempt to bridge the worlds of science and the arts. About lungs. <laughs> they didn't used to be kept apart so much. Yeah. Science and art, or the arts and humanities, often were, in the Greek times and, and later, were considered to be different aspects of the same inquiry, the same exploration of being alive in the universe. And uh, th I think they're long-lost lovers yearning to be reunited. They, they, there's nothing, they should be reunited. We're reuniting them with this work on communication because it's it's both an art and a science to figure out what's the best way to learn to communicate better. All right, Alan Alda's book is If I Understood You, Would I Have This Look on My Face? It's quite a title. Well, you have quite a face. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice Thank to, you. I had nice fun to talk you. to you. Thank you.